Hey everybody, Alan Ballard, not a cornhole pro. Hey, welcome. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I want to first off say thank you so very much to all my sponsors and all my supporters. Everything that you guys have done for me so far to help me get to these last two majors. I played in Toledo, and then a couple weeks later we went to Hamilton, Ohio for Spooky Nook, which was a Pro Series major. Pro Series skins, Pro Series major. Uh, sponsors, I can't say thank you enough. Timber Town Baggers, Don Ball, um, and you guys and just absolutely have uh, stepped up and covered uh, a lot of things for me and made this possible. I thank you very much. Of course, BW Bags, um, that's what we're throwing this year. We've made a, a switch over, and the other people that I was throwing with before, I went and got, and got their bags and uh, threw them a little bit today. Just to kind of get the, because once again, you change bag companies and different bags, different feel. Uh, it's completely different, and you, you've got to learn that. And uh, what I found is these bags at BW, they're so hand friendly. They feel good in the hand. The bead feels good. Uh, the material is soft. Um, if you like a real hard, firm bag, you know, then I, I don't know. There's, there, I'm sure there's bags out there that's like that, but these here are really super hole friendly. Uh, they're hand, they feel good in the hands. And I've added another set. Another um, one to it. It's the Rubicons. Um, got them broke in. Uh, I'm throwing them today to, to finish breaking them in, but they're very, very nice. Um, of course, I, I've been breaking everything in with the Mr. 12, the Podium Potion. Uh, Grant Upchurch uh, hooked me up with that, and stuff is absolutely amazing. I broke in uh, probably 10 sets for other people. Uh, Grant sent me some free, free stuff to get the stuff out in the market. So if you're looking for the best Podium Potion, the best bag breaking material, on the market, Podium Potion's it. Go look up Mr. 12 or just Podium Potion and it'll pop up and get you a bottle of that. And of course, uh, 45th Parallel. Um, Brock, you're always an amazing friend and I appreciate everything that you've done for me and uh, we'll continue to uh, support that and, and it's fantastic. So thank you very much everybody for that. And looking for another sponsor maybe for the spring. Um, so I've got two more majors that I've scheduled. Uh, maybe, I'm sure things will change whatnot, but um, the uh, next one I'm headed to is Dallas. Uh, super excited about this. It's more of a vacation for me, a corncation. And I'm uh, going to be down there with Grant and John Shiznitsky. Uh, Shiznitsky, I can't say his last name. Um, but with a at AJ Sports in Dallas. Just outside of uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, going to be down there on the Sunday and leave the following Sunday. So be down there seven days. Uh, so lots of content coming for that. Thank you so much. And I'm super excited about that. I'm supposed to be getting some uh, drip from AJ's. <laughs> so I was going to get a new shirt and a hat uh, coming for myself and my wife. Um, that's supposed to be shipped. And I, I appreciate AJ's uh, sports for doing that. All right, let's get into it. All right, so AJ's, or excuse me, uh, Spooky Nook. Um, man, did I learn a lot. Uh, boy. It was a, it wasn't a super major, uh, it was a pro skins major. And what that means is they had a pro series event, all the pros were there. Um, there was 560 players in the singles, just amazing. And so uh, seniors had 51 pre-registered, I think it was 54 people that played. So uh, a couple things that I learned. Uh, I threw above my average, which is very good for me, I'm, I'm happy. My, I'm showing game improvement, hashtag game improvement. Um, so that's really, really good. Uh, I was playing smarter, uh, not playing uh, as aggressive, not making the dumb airmail shots that, honestly, I don't have the airmail right now. Um, consistent. I can do it, it but sometimes it's kind of like, ooh, did, did that, accident. Uh, but the, um, the bags that I have are able to, I'm able to work them and, and do what I, make the shots that I want to make, So which is, which is what you want. Uh, through the sparks, mostly. Um, and then uh, also the Evox, um, those Evokes, um, those bags just, the boards were not sticky this time. They were not slow. Uh, they were good speed. Uh, everything was wonderful. Once again, this was a very, very large event and it was a lot of sensory overload for me. And so I had to learn how to do that. And I've been playing with uh, music now and for the last couple of weeks, and I think I figured out uh, some music that I think I'm going to work with. I'm not going to share on here what it is, but it, it's really helping me to drown out everything. It's just more like white noise for me, so that's helped a lot. I can actually see a huge increase when I don't focus on what's happening. I focus on the shot itself and, and making the play, 
playing the game and not like getting in here or listening to words of the music or whatever. Um, so another thing that I learned, uh, and I guess I just didn't know it was published, so it's not a secret. Uh, like with seniors, I'm, I'm a senior and I was playing that, and the way it's set up is the payout is 50% of the pre-registered people that are pre-registered prior to the event. So there's 51 people pre-registered and it's $30 a person entry. So that's like 1530 some dollars um, for the event. And then it's 50% of that is the payout. So they keep 50%. And so $765, something like that is what it was, uh, payout. So you divide that, I think they pay the top four. Uh, I believe that's right. Don't quote me on that part. But um, so you're talking maybe two, $250 for the first place. That's it. Uh, it's more bragging rights than anything, I think. Uh, which is fine. I mean, you know this going in, and the women's are the same way. And uh, juniors don't pay, but they, uh, and I don't think they get payout either. They get a prize. Um, but the main bracket pays um, the top eight players. You know, and out of 560 people, only the top eight get paid. I don't know. That's, I get it. I understand, you know play better to get to get there and i know there's lots of costs don't do not bust my chops about you know oh they got all the costs for running the event. yep i understand that but they also paid out five thousand dollars in pro skins where the pros didn't have to pay anything to play they just earn money so some of them are making 250 275 350 dollars um so i made up a thousand dollars we paid for that frankly that's, that's who paid for it. We did. Uh, the entry fees that all of us paid went to went for that. They didn't get a sponsor for that that I know of. Um, but that's where they generate most of the money, which is fine. I'm not going to get there. I get it. Um, and that's the other thing that I've realized with my game is I have to be throwing a consistent 9.5 PPR even to be competitive. I threw some 10s. I threw some 9.5s. I threw some 6s. A lot of sixes, sevens. Mostly, I'm a I'm an eight player right now, which is better, which is way better. I was a I was a six seven, you know, six five for a long time, and now I'm up to an eight eight and a half, which is fantastic. It's hashtag game improvement, and I will say it is due to I'm going to say it due to my the new bags that I'm throwing BW bags. Um, Brandon makes a good bag, and I'm not blowing smoke. It's just that's what feels good in my hands. Um, but. I have to make that realization. Um, you know, do I have what it takes? And, I, and I've been doing some mental um, coaching uh, with somebody as well. And one of the things that the coach said was, what are your true expectations? Do I expect to go down there and get first place? Well, not right now with my game. Flat out, no. I, I went to the enjoy the experience. Uh, what an experience it was. Like I said, um, it's a big event. I've got to learn how to play in that type of environment. I choked. I will flat out tell you, um, I had several people down. I was up on them big time, and I just like a couple more shots, and I'd have made it. I'd have beat them, but I flat out choked. I got right in my head, and I, I did not close the game, and that's my own fault. I let, I let one guy come all the way back from down 16 to 2, and he was up. He was saying, you're kicking my butt, and I said, yep, and... He did it on purpose. I, I get it. I don't have what I didn't have what it takes to to close the deal, and that's where I've got to continue to stay aggressive, stay in the moment, stay in the shot, uh, play the game like you can, like it's the last shot, like you cannot make a mistake. Play that aggressive, like killer instinct, if you will. Um, let's see. Uh, one thing that we kind of we we did was kind of cool. Is there's a video game, a video arcade game room there. And they had a Charizard. I don't know if you know what that is. You see it on my post. Go back. And uh, you had to cut the string in the game to, to win the prize. And we did. I did, and uh, which I thought was really cool. Excuse my dogs in the background. They're having fun and playing. It's nice, cool weather today. It's like in the upper 60s here. So uh, North Michigan fall. You kind of see the beautiful colors. The leaves are falling. It's beautiful. Um, but what I'm going to really focus on is um, just running bags. Uh, no mistakes. I got to. I've, I've got rid of the front board, uh, so that's good. Um, just keeping the boards, the bags on the board. I had too many off the boards, uh, off the back, which you know I get. Uh, 
playing aggressive is going to happen. I'd rather be long than I would be short. Uh, never leave a putt short on the 18th, right? So with that said, uh, that's what we're working on. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, but just the realization of, you know, the payouts. Oh, the tier system. Um, another thing that they, that they changed up this week because there were so many people. Before, Frank Gears had said in his uh, video, his vlog, on the Taco Tuesday that when they do the tiering system, you could play up, but you can't play down. That was the rule. That was the thought. That was the that was the saying. Not anymore. You cannot do that. You cannot move up uh, in a tier. So if you make tier three, you can't go to tier two. And the way they have it set up <clears throat> to get into tier two, you have to have an average PPR across all your majors and regionals. Majors and regionals is how they view that. And that is... Um, an eight and a half or above, eight and a half to 12 get you in tier two on your average of your majors and regionals, nothing else. So when I was at Toledo, I got moved up to tier two. So I have tier two points. Um, with my PPR, the way it was at, uh, I think it was an eight, three, eight, three, five. Uh, that put me in tier three. Now tier three, they had, uh, four brackets in tier three. Uh, just because of the time, it, just, it was a six-hour drive for me. I had to be back for church. I left. I didn't play. I told them, no, I'm not going to play in there. And they ended up putting me in bracket C anyways, which I thought was crazy. And I told them not to put me in bracket play, but they did. And then, of course, I forfeited the game because I wasn't there. I was already halfway home by the time we got to, they got to playing it. And it was like we left at 5, and I think they didn't get to play until uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock that night, uh, Saturday night, because they were trying to get through the, the main bracket and – getting them on the broadcast, which yeah, no, I'm not upset over that. Um, but anyway, I ended up taking 17th because I had a first round bye. I was the first, I was the number one seed in, in the C bracket in tier three. So I have tier three points and I didn't even play. I thought it was weird. I even asked them to take that off there and they wouldn't do it. So they said, no, it's tier, tier three points. So I have tier two points and tier three points. Now, what that said is if you don't play in the tier play, it's not going to penalize you. If you don't make main bracket, and you get put into tier, and you don't play, you don't get penalized. Okay, great. But in Toledo, there was a lady who played in tier, who got, who made tier five, didn't even play a game, and got a trophy. She got the first place plaque, and she was the only lady in tier five, and she got a plaque. I disagree with that. Um, but whatever, that's their business, not mine. So, what do you do from here? Um, I'm going to play in Dallas. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as large, which will be good for me and my, my mental game. Uh, but that's what I'm going to work on this whole time is my mental aspect of the game. Um, I've talked about this before, but uh, the mental side of this is, you know, I would say it's 85% mental, 50% uh, you know, abilities to, do, to play the game, to make the shot. Some people say it's 90-10, you know, okay, I think it's 85-15, but... Um, once again, this I I learned so much of this major. I uh, played one cash game uh, that we won. Uh, the other ones wouldn't play a cash; they just play. So I played against the pros, um, got beat, won. You know both ways, uh, which was fine. Uh, nobody wanted to play cash games on Friday. Nobody at all. I tried to get other people to play cash games; they just wouldn't do it. I don't know whether they were scared or what. I don't know, but they just weren't. They just didn't do it. So, all right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. My dogs love you. Thank you very much. Uh, God bless. And once again, I appreciate the support and the encouragement. Um, we'll try to get some more content out there. And uh, once again, uh, next major is going to be uh, Dallas. And we'll hopefully hit some regionals. But with my work schedule and things are changing up, uh, I'm not so sure I'm going to be able to make any regionals. So we'll see. God bless. Have a good day. Stay down the middle.